Hi there, welcome to another edition of the Yugabyte DB Tech Talk series. My name is Sid Chaudhary, and today I'm going to walk you through data modeling basics, PostgreSQL versus Cassandra versus MongoDB. Now, the SQL versus NoSQL debate has been continuing for more than 10 years. At, at the heart of it, SQL or relational data modeling is about modeling your data itself. Whereas NoSQL or non-relational mo data modeling is about modeling your queries as opposed to modeling your data. And that is sort of uh, uh, summarized in this table where we have uh, the, the SQL world and both NoSQL world standardizing in the concepts of tables and primary keys. Um, however, uh, while NoSQL uses things like partition keys to partition your data across a, a distributed set of nodes, SQL does not have any such concept of a partition key. Um, similarly, SQL has notions of foreign keys, whereas uh, NoSQL does not. Um, and SQL has things like global secondary indexes, uh, integrity constraints, asset transactions, joins, all these things that help you just model your data but write your queries later. NoSQL adds the benefit of data auto expiry through time to live directives. And that at, at the heart of it, um, as well as the distribution of data allows NoSQL to handle very large amounts of data volumes. Whereas SQL uh, databases are inherently monolithic or single node uh, in, in nature. Um, it's that monolithic uh, architecture lends itself to master-slave replication for, for failover, whereas no SQL um, architecture lends itself to always on uh, auto failover between you know, one node and another if one node dies. So uh, SQL databases do increase application agility through asset transactions um, and ability to query data using joins. And, and NoSQL databases put a high uh, emphasis on high performance uh, in, in the distributed cluster uh, and, and focus on getting you one key at a time really fast. Now, um, here at Yugabyte DB, we believe that all modern applications actually need both SQL and NoSQL. You cannot say that I do not need SQL or I do not need NoSQL when I'm building anything meaningful uh, in the world. Let's take four uh, widely used applications. We probably touch all four of them um, almost uh, daily in our, in our lives. If you see very closely, they, they both, uh, I mean, all of them use uh, both SQL databases and NoSQL databases in conjunction with each other. Um, SQL is typically used for low volume, highly mission critical data around users, products, orders, invoices. Um, and NoSQL is used for high volume, slightly less mission critical data, such as product reviews, user activity, help desk messages, recommendations. These are typically ever growing in nature. Uh, there is sort of, I mean, you, they will keep getting generated as, as time progresses. Introducing Yugabyte DB to this world, where we have essentially created world's first SQL and NoSQL database in a, on a common storage engine. Uh, we have three APIs that we offer. All of them are transactional in nature. Uh, the first one is, is a key value API that allows you to do very fast single key access. Um, and it's, you can get sub millisecond latencies because the, the data modeling complexity is just not there. Uh, however, you, since we're uh, compatible with the Redis command library, you can do things like so, uh, sorted sets, hash maps, uh, time series data types, and so on. Uh, we also offer a flexi schema transactional API um, with, with single shard asset guarantees. Um, we offer things like global secondary indexes as well as native JSON data type. Uh, the idea is that you still do majority single key access and you still get a very high performance, but if at all you need to do you know, multi-key access such as a global secondary indexes, um, we are there to ensure that you can still build the application fast without necessarily forsaking those, those good application development constructs. Last but not the least, we have our YSQL API, which is essentially a globally distributed SQL uh, API with full support for distributed uh, and multi-shard asset transactions, joins, and, and data integrity constraints. It's, it's fully compatible with PostgreSQL because it reuses uh, a significant portion of the PostgreSQL code. And uh, 
here the focus is is on ensuring that you can actually get the benefit of, of, of scale out um, to get linear right throughput um, while remaining as low latency as possible uh, without compromising on your SQL compatibility. So the net result is as a developer, you have unparalleled data modeling freedom for the same workload that, that requires transaction scale out and high performance. Coming to the underlying storage engine of Yugabyte DB, it's essentially based on the Google Spanner architecture, and, but it's implemented in, in open source as an Apache 2.0 project. Uh, the, the, it's, a, it's actually a distributed document store. Uh, which stores uh, every key as a separate document irrespective of any of the three data models that we chose. Um, the, the aspects of fault tolerance, uh, auto sharding, ability to distribute data across multiple AZs and regions, um, and do full asset compliance and with high performance, all these are built into the core of the engine, and, and the APIs are, are just simply data modeling constructs that help you use the underlying engine uh, in, in the most um, in, in, the mo in the manner that is most relevant to your application. Let me walk you through an actual data modeling lab. It's there on our blog. So I will close this out. I will go to uh, our blog. And in, in there, I, I'll show you how to actually install Yugabyte DB, which is with its both PostgreSQL and the Cassandra compatible uh, APIs turned on, um, and then compare it against uh, MongoDB, right? Um, so all you have to do is, is just simply, and we'll run everything in Docker, uh, because it's, it's the easiest to get started, get set up. Um, and, and all you have to do is just do a Docker pull, and then uh, you're you are ready to instantiate the cluster this way. In case of uh, MongoDB, you, you just instantiate the cluster through doing a Docker run. After that, now we have uh, a, a PostgreSQL endpoint, we have a, a Cassandra compatible endpoint, and we have a MongoDB endpoint. Now uh, we will use their, their individual uh, command line shells to interact with them. So PostgreSQL, we do this Docker exec into one of the particular uh, containers and, and then in, start the PSQL uh, shell. In case of Cassandra, we do the same, but now we'll start the SQL SH shell. Uh, in case of Mongo, we do the uh, we do the what is known as the Mongo shell, um, and and we get that started. Thereafter, uh, we'll model a, a music library where um, there are uh, there are artists publishing songs under various albums. Uh, those songs are published in a particular year. They have the concept of a price. They uh, they have a genre. They have a critic rating, and 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 we'll use the, the, the tags uh, attribute to store um, any additional attributes that we are not yet aware of. With that as, uh, as, our, uh, as our data uh, that we want to model, in PostgreSQL, it's just a simple create table command. Uh, in case of Cassandra, you see the create table command is actually very similar to that of PostgreSQL. However, there is one big difference, and that difference comes from uh, the the inability of Cassandra to have integrity constraints such as not null or foreign key constraints as well, right? Um, and and that all that is not there in Cassandra it's because the focus is on on giving you access to only a single key as fast as possible versus uh, burdening the database API with with doing application level validation. Um, in case of MongoDB, uh, it doesn't even require uh, such a schema to be created because it, it touts itself as a, as a schema-less uh, database. So you can, you can define schema at right um, and, and it'll work as is. Um, after that table has been created, we can uh, st start doing uh, metadata queries on the table and see what exactly is the structure of the table. In PostgreSQL, it's a very simple command, slash t music, it'll, it'll give us what is the kind of table that we created. Uh, Cassandra has a very similar command called describe table, and it gives us uh, a, 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 uh, the same create table command that we had previously uh, set up. Um, in case of MongoDB, we just start uh, simply using the collections uh, and, and the database as is. Now let's insert some, some rows into this database. In case of uh, uh, Postgres, what we're going to do is we're going to insert um, 
like four rows uh, into the into the diff, into the table, but each will have slight different variants around uh, you know what kind of attributes do we populate. It and it gets very interesting when it comes to the insert and select and update all those statements in Cassandra. It looks very similar to that of PostgreSQL. In fact, the Cassandra query language owes its uh, genesis partly to you know the SQL and, and PostgreSQL as, as a flavor uh, for, for inspiration. It just is a more restrictive version uh, of, of the SQL world. Uh, but the insert statement is, is as same as, as PostgreSQL. In case of Mongo, though, the world looks very different because uh, here we are going to do um, inserts through MongoDB's uh, sort of proprietary API layer. Um, and, and there we have to define each data element in, in, in terms of a, of a JSON object. Um, and we, we start doing just, just, just doing inserts uh, one by one on top of it. And if we don't specify a, a underscore ID, which is the internal ID of a document, then MongoDB knows that it has to create a new document as opposed to updating an existing document. After the data has been inserted, time to query. What is what good as a database if, if, if we cannot query it? Now, um, this is where uh, we see that in case of PostgreSQL, you can almost query it through uh, you know a lot of even unimaginable ways uh, that when when you had started modeling. However, when it comes to Cassandra, you 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 will see that it's it becomes slightly more restrictive because uh, in in case of NoSQL, uh, the the from and where clauses start becoming restrictive. In Cassandra, the the table name there can be only one table in in the from. Whereas PostgreSQL, there can be multiple. And Cassandra will force us, and not only Cassandra, even MongoDB will force us to have a, a, uh, a clean primary ID, uh, primary key ID in the where clause or the filter clause so that the database knows exactly what rows to pull out from. With that, uh, if we want to read all the rows of the table, it's as simple as doing a select star. Same in Cassandra. Uh, MongoDB has its own flavor of select star called find. Um, if we want to do updates, um, you can do updates uh, in, in both Cassandra and Postgres with, with exactly almost the same um, the syntax. In case of uh, uh, MongoDB, you, get, uh, you have to learn a little bit more whether you want to do uh, if multiple documents are, are meeting that criteria, do you want to update them? As well as do you want to do an upsert semantics or, or just uh, do an insert? Um, when it comes to deleting data, again, Mong uh, Postgres and Cassandra are almost exactly the same. You just do run the same delete command and, and it'll work as is. In case of MongoDB, you, you have to choose a specific uh, kind of uh, um, document delete command which usually we delete one or delete many as well as remove and, and they have slightly va different variations of what they exactly do. And finally there is uh, you know ability to remove a table. With that you know I have reached the end of my talk. I uh, recommend each one and every one of you to actually visit our blog and run this modeling exercise for yourself to see how uh, NoSQL changes modeling when it comes to uh, data uh, from the SQL world. While it, it not being so different than SQL, it's slightly a little bit more restrictive uh, than SQL. And in return, you get uh, lower latency and high throughput. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next edition.